Hi everybody, this is Luke. This episode is intended to be the second part of the previous video. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly suggest you to check that one first. Just so we are all on the same page, I finally decided to dive into the installation of the open source firmware for the Tongsheng TSDZ2. I opted for the GitHub project from Mbrusa, which allows us to have a sufficient number of options to play with, while at the same time keeping the original display. This way we avoided the boring process of readapting another screen. The process was successful, so let's continue our story from there. Do you remember the ghost speed displayed at startup time? I know now what that is, thanks to the comment of one of my viewers. More on that later. In the meantime, thanks for your help, buddy. When I tried the new firmware, I was impressed. The hybrid mode is a game changer, and for the first time I had a sense of what the real potential of this mid-drive kit could possibly be. Of course, I didn't stop there. As you might imagine, I also tried to squeeze the most out of this mid-drive kit full of surprises. The stock VLCD5 display has still its limitations. That's not a secret to anyone. We still don't have on screen the actual power consumed by the motor in real time, but changing the firmware has significantly improved the situation. I've read some comments saying that with the open source firmware, the TSDZ2 feels more like the Bosch motor. I don't know about that, but what I do have is a 500W Bofang BBS02B. My goal is to make my 500W TSDZ2 closest to the experience of the Bofang one. Let's first clarify why I said closest and not equal. Difference number one, ghost pedaling. You might find this awkward, but one of the things I like most about a cadence sensing motor is the possibility to act like pedaling, having the motor doing all the effort at my place. Clearly, that's not what I expect from the TSDZ2, which will still require at least to gently reach the traction of the chain. Difference number two, torque sensing. In my humble opinion, that's the best feature of the TSDZ2, and also what makes it so special and loved by most people. You cannot have that on the BBS02B, and that's the reason why I choose the hybrid mode on the configurator. I want, as the manual says, excellent low cadence assist, typical of torque mode, and the extension of high cadence power mode. I couldn't say it better than this. On the Bofang kit, you can specify the number of assistance levels to dispose of. The choice is between 9, 5 or 3. Personally, I always found 9 to be too many, and 3 to be too few. 5 assistance levels is my choice. Considering that I basically never use level number 5, and that level number 4 provides around 80% of the motor's power, I would be happy if, at level 4, the custom firmware of the TSDZ2 could be closer to the level 4 of my 500W BBS02B in terms of sustained speed. In order to reach my goal, I played in the parameter configurator with the values in the assistance settings tab, in particular with the two involved assist mode, power and torque. As the manual says, those values are expressed in percentage, where 500 is the maximum value. What you see here is the result of many iteration of try and see. Talking about the ghost speed at startup, those are actually useful information shown by the firmware. The first value is the residual battery percentage. If we turn on the lights, we get more values after that. The second one is the actual battery voltage, while the third one is the consumed watt hour. Since those values are shown as speed, we should tell the motor to compensate the odometer in order to prevent its increase. For this reason, let's jump back to the basic settings to better match the configuration. I don't expect those to affect performances, but they should help me get even more precise evaluations. First of all, let me flag the odometer compensation option. I also adjusted some battery settings based on my battery pack. Moreover, I set the same volt cutoff as on my Befang kit, cause 31 is a more conservative number than 29 
to make my battery last longer. All the rest stays the same as in the last video. Once I flashed my custom firmware again, I couldn't believe what I was experiencing. At every assistance level I had an incredible torque assistance and at the same time the same speed I have on the Bafang when pedaling regularly. Meaning with regularly, not ghost pedaling. It's all I ever wanted from my TSDZ2, for the first time behaving like an 80Nm rated motor. I was so excited that I decided to do once again the range test I made in one of my past videos between the stock configured motors. For more details about the experiment, go check that video. But basically, it was a 10 km round trip, with the same exact battery, fully charged at 42.3V, measured using the voltmeter of the P850C Bafang display. The bike was well pressured and the wind was below 6 km per hour. Even this time I was below 35 km per hour, because of other cars and some irregularities on specific trails. Only when I was on a free, flat road I was able to stay at a constant 38 km per hour of speed. The difference was that this time I didn't have to touch the throttle not even a single time. I didn't need to. Oh, by the way, the throttle is still jerky if compared with the BBS-02B. If you use it when pedaling, you don't feel any extra help from the motor. When replacing pedaling, you won't go as fast as you would expect. Maybe I should change something about it within the parameter configurator. Let me know if you figured that out. Back to the test. I had my round trip, this time without any fatigue. I connected the used battery to the Bafang bike and I had this, 37.6 volt. It might be just a random number to you, but I couldn't believe it. Let's put it back on our old chart. Do you see it too? After those custom modifications on the TSDZ2 firmware, not only the behavior is closest to the Bafang one, but I consumed exactly the same amount of current. Now, what can we say after all of this? First of all, I must say that some of you guys were right about the stock TSDZ2 rating. I bought the 36V 500W rated at 80Nm. But when I installed and tried it, it felt way less powerful than that to me. I don't know if the rating is fair, but at least we know now the tools to unlock its full potential. The next consideration is that, sadly, ratings and pedaling sensing systems don't tell us much about what a motor is capable of. If you have a torque sensing e-bike, but the motor doesn't stand its specification, we might be disappointed. The opposite is also true for the BBS-02B. We might think we are buying a 500W motor and then discover it can peak up to 750W consuming a lot of battery. That's why it's important, if we have the possibility, to try something before buying even if it's a conversion kit. Alternatively, you can watch some detailed video about it. But what about you guys? Let me know if you're trying this firmware and what kind of settings you're using. If you have any comment or suggestion, I read them in the comment section of this video. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future video. And if you want to support me, you can show your appreciation by hitting the like button. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.